Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of The Sketch Adventure. In today's episode, I'm going to be starting a two-part series on composition. Now I do want to mention that this is a free, shorter version of a 37-minute tutorial that I've got on my Gumroad. In the paid version, I go much further in depth on the topics covered here, and it's only $6, so if that interests you, I'd be grateful for the support. These are three excellent paintings by three different artists. Going from left to right, we have The Spinner by Paul Peel, Portrait of Madame Ashley by Ander Zorn, and lastly, Anna Alma Tadema by Lawrence Alma Tadema. These paintings have several impressive qualities to them, but the one in particular that we're looking at and going to narrow in on is their simple light and dark compositions. If we strip away all of the color and gradations, and really just reduce this down to two value groups, we get this. A simple yet perfectly clear image composed of light shapes and dark shapes. This is the goal of the picture maker. To be able to clearly communicate a visual story with the fewest values will mean that the impact is all the greater because nothing was wasted. Now I should mention that these light dark reductions are just the result of a threshold filter in Photoshop, which is why they do have a bit of ambiguity. The filter doesn't understand subtle lighting like in the Tatama painting, so some of the information is lost. here I'm going to point out a few of the major lines of actions that our eyes get carried around the picture on. As you can see, the rhythms in this picture are like a swirling vortex, never letting our eyes escape. Everything leads to the man who's being held, but his gaze shoots us back over to the woman in the corner, whose body sweeps down back onto the floor and up the back of the figure on the left. If establishing a strong rhythm is a priority of yours, I suggest trying to start thumbnails for illustrations or sketches by drawing abstract rhythms, then trying to plug in your visual elements after. The next two depth cues that one can use are converging parallel lines and diminution. Diminution is just the effect of objects repeating into the distance but optically appearing smaller. I mentioned converging lines and diminution together because if you think about it, the objects that are getting smaller in size can actually have lines laid over their tops and bottoms which appear to converge, but this only really happens if the objects are arranged somewhat evenly in a line, like the painting on the right by Ilya Rapine. Once again we'll run a threshold filter and see that the images are both fairly readable even at two values. Although the Levitan painting does become a bit indistinguishable in the middle band of trees, but overall is still clear. I'm now going to switch over and do some drawing. I'm going to be doing a series of these two value breakdowns, and I'll be looking at some illustrations, landscapes, and lastly doing five from imagination. The whole time I'll be talking about the important shape, rhythm, and depth considerations. So let's get started. I'm going to describe my process for looking at paintings and turning them into simple two value thumbnails. First I'll be looking at a portrait by Gustav Klimt. I've already sketched out a rough line drawing, so now it's time to mass in the dark shapes. Anytime I make a dark shape, it can only be one of two things. Something that's in the shadow, or something that's a dark material. This painting has lighting coming from both the right and left side, which wasn't as common in paintings in the 19th century, but Klimt wasn't known for being conventional either. I mostly use a Tombow Fudnesuke brush pen, but I also use a very fine tip micron because of how small these thumbnails are. Occasionally I'll also use a Pentel pocket brush if I need to cover a larger area of dark as well. Already, with the little information I've put down, the image is becoming readable. I always think back to this story I heard Craig Mullen say, where when he was training at the Art Center, he was in the Industrial Design program, and whenever he would do any type of figure or portrait, everyone can tell that, as he said, was one of those Industrial Design guys. He wanted to shed that look and to be able to create natural looking figures and environments while still maintaining his strong grasp of industrial design fundamentals. And clearly he succeeded, but I'm sure it took a lot of focused drawing and painting from observation. Because this man's jacket is dark and the background's also dark, they'll be lost. But much of this way of working is being selective about what information we choose to reveal and what we choose to obscure. This is how our eyes work. We don't see all the details like a camera.
This next one is an illustration by one of my favorite artists, Carla Ortiz. I'm a huge fan of hers and absolutely love her style, technique, and compositions. This piece of hers is a magic card, Tessa, Envoy of Ghosts. When looking at life, pictures, movie stills, or other artists' artwork, you're forced to make many decisions when choosing to break them down into two values. It's a way of learning how to compose something that forces you to make decisions. There's simply no way you can copy while doing this. I roughly sketch in the major elements in this scene, not being concerned whatsoever about the details. My focus at this point is making sure I get the proportions of the figure and the environment correct. My rule of thumb when it comes to painting is to get just enough lines down to start my journey and build up as I go. I know this doesn't quite apply when working with a brush pen because there's no correcting the mistakes you make, but I still end up doing this a little. Let's talk about the depth cues in this painting. Having the tabletop visible on the left side is a great way to show converging parallel lines. This goes for the books in the background as well. This composition is in a somewhat limited confined space, so there isn't a huge emphasis on depth. But the table's convergence combined with it overlapping the cane, chair, and background elements adds a lot. I suggest googling the image and try to pick out all the overlaps present. Before we finish off this section, I want to bring your attention to just how different each one of these compositions look. Just looking at them as a collection of abstract light and dark shapes, you can begin to see how the possibilities are almost endless. I love planning compositions in an abstract way, just looking for well designed and arranged shapes, then after I've made a few pages of them, I'll begin to see which ones I can use for an illustration. Okay guys, I'm going to end the video here, but if you want to see me finish these and talk about building two value landscapes and then finally illustration thumbnails from imagination, please visit my Gumroad page and purchase the tutorial for only $6. As always, if you have any questions about this process, or really anything, I'm happy to answer. See you guys on the next sketch adventure.